This is a video of the next rated artist receiving the Hades award back in 2015. But just a few minutes later, this happened. This what the shit! Baba Yaya! Sweetie take over! And right after that, this followed. Ebo, Malamide, if you want the car, come and collect it. If you're familiar with the Afrobeat scene, nobody needs to tell you that the 2015 Hades was probably the most dramatic award night in its history. But this isn't about the Hades or bad decision made on stage. This story is about a young, talented artist who always seems to see himself in tricky, unfortunate situations. Situations that make people question his relevancy in the music industry today. Afa, my lord day for you. Ayole Yihanel Solomon, born 6 December 1993, who is better known by the stage name Ricardo Bounce, is a Nigerian singer and songwriter. He is the last born child of six siblings from a family that adores music. His father is a pastor from Isaroni Fedora, local government area, Ondo State, and his mother is a Ketra. He grew up in the disciplinary setting due to both of his parents being pastor. He completed secondary school at the age of 14 and started recording his first set of songs in 2008. Now, I know it sounds like I'm reading straight off Wikipedia. Wikipedia, and yeah, you're right, but it's not because I'm some lazy ass researcher. It's to show you how simple and straightforward Hanel's early life was. I'm not saying he had it all perfect, but there really wasn't any major controversies during his childhood, and as the last born, well, and I know I said the B now. Last bonds get pampered. Everyone's looking out for you, making sure you don't repeat their mistakes. Last bonds they enjoy you. I'm the last child of six. Wow. All the other ones are, you know, grown up and they've handled them to a certain extent. And when it got to my turn, I felt like they eased up a little bit. And it was just like, oh, yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah, so. Are you done? Ah. So when the family realized he had musical talent, naturally they wanted him on the right path, especially his older brother Temi. Once Temi saw those little poems Hannah was writing, he didn't waste time. He learned music production so they could create music together. Their dad even built a home studio so they wouldn't have to run around the street looking for one. I mean, considering the fact that my dad is a pastor, sad. Yeah. And he never just, he never opposed. In fact, he was the first, he was the person that built me my first studio. Mm -hmm. Although he never heard any of the songs we were recording. <laughs> I started writing songs. First, some rap songs, then other type of music. After writing, I would sing them to my brother when he got back from school. He didn't do anything with it at first, but told me instead to write another one that is as interesting as the Banji's Igwe. Then later, a song as interesting as T-Pain's Bartender. And we went on and on until we moved from writing and sounding like others to defining our own style. From 2010 to 2012, after Hanel got admitted into Unilag, he and his brother were hustling hard to break into Nigerian music scene. Anna was going by the stage name Spicy and his older brother as Eobits. Together they formed TOT Records and dropped tracks like Hold Them Down and Malo Goke. That's all I want to see you from me. Show my Zibarosha. I wrote my Zibarosha. How you got to do the last class here? You got to do the one here. Malo Goke. It wasn't until 2013 after they released a year that things really started moving. That same year, Ricardo got signed into Marvin's, which he said happened as a miracle. At first, they tried getting on other label, but we were turned down several times. He mentioned that the only way he had ever experienced before then was winning a Blackberry in secondary school competition. His music career was frustrating him badly. It got to a point where my stage name then, Spicy, was even stolen by a friend. That happened in July 2013 and after that, I told myself that by October 2013, I was going to drop music. But right before October, precisely in August, the Marvin deal came true. Maven activated. What's up people? My name is Don Jazzy and I just launched my new record label, maybe in Records. At this time, Don Jazzy had just ended his relationship with his defunct label, Mohit, and was building a new team with his newly formed Supreme Marvin Dynasty, aka Marvin Records. He put out a tweet about wanting to listen to demo tapes from new artists. That's when Hannah's brother, Tammy, saw the post and sent all their music to the label without him even knowing. The only thing he told me was to keep praying that something big might happen soon. So he sent another and thank god I got picked. The day we had to go, he just told me to get ready that we are going to Don Jazzy's studio. I was like, Don Jazzy's studio? To do what? I believe his brother formed T.O.T. Records as a clever way to make Ricardo look like an established artist. All their tracks were recorded in their room, but Tammy packaged it so well that when the opportunity with Marvin came up, he didn't waste any time pushing his brother's music. And as luck would have it, Hannah was picked 
out of 5,000 submissions. At this time, I didn't even have a phone. My brother did. He saw it and he sent my song. And to cut the long story short, out of 5,000 entries, I was the only one chosen. When we got there, they made me record six songs in two hours. They just kept playing beats and asked me to sing. He officially got signed in December 2013 and was introduced as Ricardo Banks in February 2014 with his debut track Turn It Off featuring Tua Savage. As a member of Marvin Record, Ricardo joined in dropping collaborative hits like Dorobuchi, Adobe and more singles like Chopin which made serious wave and him the Rookie of the Year award in Hades 2014. When you compare Ricardo's music before and after joining Marvin Record, you can see the transformation. Don Jazzy puts in the work to make his artists superstars. The way Don Jazzy polishes and elevates his artists is unmatched and that's why Marvin Record continues to stand at the top of the Afrobeat scene. But just when Ricardo was was about to receive the recognition he worked so hard for the afrobeat community made him feel like he didn't deserve any of it the hades originally known as the hip-hop world award started in 2006 and quickly became the most prestigious music award in nigeria among all these categories the next rated award stands out because the winner takes home an expensive car <laughs> So far, 15 artists have claimed the prize, and in 2015, Ricardo joined the list beating out Lil Kesh, Kiss Daniel, Corey DeBero, and Cynthia Morgan. Now, in case you didn't know, the next rated award is a voting category. That means fans vote for the most promising upcoming act. Technically, there shouldn't be any controversies about who wins, but if you've been paying attention, you will notice something. A rapper has never won this category. And it makes sense because in this voting category, you need to be massively popular to take the win. Take 2008 for example. When the goal was up against Banky W A Putemeta, MIS Crowd Mentality, GT Guitar Man's Dreamer, and Cyrus the Virus very buffy. But he won it with Ololufe. Then in 2011, Whiskey went up against Ice Prince Oliku, Olamide Zendi Dulu, and Tiwa Savage Kele Kele Love. But he took the award with Hola Chu Boy. The same thing happened in 2019, Rema won with Dumebi and Omale in 2020. It proves the point, you need wide mainstream love to win. But let's talk about 2015, that year was different. It was the era of the street takeover. Most of the street bangers we still vibe to today came from that year. Bumble by Olamide, Luka Rapper, Connect by Fino, Jeraban by YC, King Kong by Vector. Hip hop, especially street local vibes, was on fire. <laughs> And with that kind of energy, Lokesh signed on the Lambda YBNL was the front runner. The guy was on fire with his like Efe Jokunyu, Shoki, and Buese. Me, I was thinking if it wasn't Lokesh for the next rated award, then it had to be Kiss Daniel. I mean, Liar is still one of Kiss Daniel's songs that holds up memories for me. But then, something unexpected happened. The winner for the next rated 2015 is Ricardo Blacks. Ricardo Vance won the next rated award with the track Catapult. What? This shock, yeah, it felt like what McLemore did to Kendrick at the 2014 Grammys. People are not having it, especially on Lamy Day, who was banking on Lil Kesh winning the award. You know, I don't call you good. Let's be honest, this award belongs to Lil Kesh because Lil Kesh is our next rated artist. Fuck that shit! Baba Yaya! Sweetie Takeover! I can fucking sing who was a hit back to back from lyrically to shocky to FS Joku. Could you tap for anybody? And of course, Don Jazzy had to reply. Um, Ebo, uh, Malami Dave, if you want the car, come and collect it. God bless you. This sparked a beef between Marvin Record and YBNL, but it didn't last long. Olamide and Don Jazzy squashed the beef and even issued a joint apology that same year. I'm here to say a big sorry to the Eddie's crew, YouTube e crew, and Mr. Yohan Masham. So. But despite that, the drama surrounding the award tainted Ricardo's win. It left many people feeling like he wasn't truly deserving. Thanks to Don Jazzy's scanter speech though, Alam they couldn't steal all the shine from Ricardo that night. The Marvin Shield made him look unconscionable and no amount of fan criticism 
could break through. Now, don't get me wrong, Ricardo Banks is an extremely talented artist. His debut album Spotlight 2016 was a huge success. Talk more of the bangers he had dropped after then till date. The guy is good and he has a unique way of making his that stands out. But let's be real, Marvin Record has this special formula that pushes the artist to another level. That's what a good level does, right? However, that protection didn't last long. After Ricardo left Marvin and ended his contract in 2018, things started to shift. It's a decision that, as we will let us see in this video, might be one he will regret. If you had to go on a hit battle with any fellow Nigerian artist, who would that be? Hashtag Ask Bonner. I don't really know what a hit battle is, but I'm willing to go toe to toe with any worthy challenger. Lyrically, musically, physically, however they want it. This was during a Q&A session Bonaboy had with his fans on Twitter, or X as it's now called. With the challenge on the table, Ricardo stepped up confidently and responded, At Bonaboy, I'm game. That energy, let's get it. But the reply he got, no one saw that coming. Bonaboy didn't just decline, he brushed Ricardo aside saying, Ha 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 ha, you know I got so much love for you bro, but didn't you see when I said, what the challenger? Rikyo. Or more. Bonaboy was basically saying, who be this one, Kwano? That one tweet went viral and it left fans wondering, had Ricardo Banks fallen off? To understand where things started to go wrong, we have to rewind to December 2018. Ricardo had just left Marvin Record and nine months later, he also parted ways with his elder brother Tammy, who had been his manager since day one. Ricardo stated that his vision had grown and he needed people who could see as far as he sees. I needed, I wanted to get somewhere else okay. the vision became a lot farther like i saw farther. bigger and different okay. yeah i saw farther than <clears throat> i used to see and i just needed somebody that would see as much but after leaving the people who helped him build his career 2020 seemed to bring more bad news than good just a few months after bonaboy's shade the nsas protest gripped the country it was an emotional time for Nigeria, with people fighting against police brutality. Justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families. In the midst of all this, Ricardo tried to drop a collaborative track he had with Whiskey called Omolomo. Now, Ricardo has always been a huge fan of Whiskey. You can check his past tweets. But what he got in return wasn't what anyone expected. As Ricardo Barnes, Clot Animal, Hashtag answers. Delete this dude, can't believe you are even doing this at a time like this. Old song, hashtag answers, fool. It was a highly sensitive time and it wasn't the best moment to promote music when people were focused on such a serious issue. But words like clout animal and fool showed just how little respect his peers had for him in that moment. What was I supposed to do? Hmm. Management had it right, they told me that. The song was good to go. I just felt disappointed, like... Like why? Like... You want to say it in your well, I, I, know, like, I, know, I know the feeling, yes, like... You yeah, were, yes, I'm like, you, the, yeah. That's how like, you felt, like... You don't even reach like this. It's like, not that deep. Yeah, so it just made me understand that I wasn't respected uh -huh. as much as I thought on his side, you know? So yeah. it's just like... There's no doubt that this kind of disrespect wouldn't have been possible if Ricardo was still under the canopy of Marvin Record. But to be honest, maybe this was exactly the experience he needed to push himself forward. The main idea behind wanting to um, be alone mm -hmm. or running my own stuff was the fact that I wanted to figure things out myself. Okay. I just wanted to be a man eventually because mm -hmm. I had to be a man at some point. Back in 2015, during his next retail speech, he said his dream was just to win the Hades like one day cool. If I quit music right now, I think I've achieved everything I want. Because um, when I started this thing in 2008, all I wanted to do was get the Hades like one day cool. All his life, he's been guided, told what to do and what not to do. That guidance got him far, no doubt. But now, 
maybe taking control of the wheel himself is what he needs to reach the next stage of his career. Maybe the world didn't think he was ready to go toe to toe with Bonaboy or that the timing with this kid was off. But Ricardo has shown one thing, resilience. And that's a quality no one can take from him. And if you check and well, out of all the people listed in the Hades Next Rated Award 2015, Apart from Kiss Daniel, Ricardo seems to be the next in line among those still maintaining their relevancy to today. Me, I still prefer Lokesh Shao, but basically, the remaining people in the list fell off. The journey has been tough since leaving Marvin's, but Ricardo Bang still got plenty to prove. So far, it's been a roller coaster, but trust me, it's not done yet. Omo, you don't do a beg, which can hype be this one? Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you.